Well, hello again. Guess who showed up? Old man Murphy. Yes, he did. He shows up every once in a while. I went to put the brake lines on the uh, over the top of the axle since we now have everything ready to go. It's just a matter of hooking up the lines and uh, letting the car down. Uh, it didn't work out quite the way I had planned. These were the lines. For those of you who have kept up with my videos, these are the ones that I bought. They were straight. I bent them to the shape of the original lines. The original lines were really rusty. They had to go. When I went to put them in, this one didn't fit. This is the one that goes on the left. This bends around the, uh, the differential. And this is the one that goes on the right. And it didn't fit. It wouldn't go. I could not get this thing to screw into the wheel cylinder. This one went in the other, over here. It went into the wheel cylinder with no problem, okay? This one would not go. Fought me all the way. So, And I was using my fingers trying to put them in. I finally checked them with the wrench. This one is 3 8 which is what it's supposed to be. A 3 takes a 3 8 a wrench. This one, not. This one is a... I didn't notice it at the time, and the guy that sold it to me, Advanced Auto, he didn't notice it either, but this is a 12 millimeter. So this is metric, this is not. Oh, couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. So you can't screw metric threads in a uh, SAE hole, okay? So anyway, I went back downtown to try to find a 30-inch line that would take, you know, that has the, uh, the 3 8 You cannot find one of those critters in the entire town. I looked everywhere. I said, you got to be kidding me. And I said, no, no, we got plenty of the metrics at 30 inches, but, but not the SAE types. I said, well, that left me no alternative but to go online. Rock, Rock Auto does not sell these things, which in turn forced me to go to Mac Auto or Mac Trans or shucks, Mac Thunderbird. <laughs> so I went ahead and ordered it from Mac Thunderbird. Again, I didn't like doing that. I don't like paying their shipping costs, but, you know, when your back is against the wall, you got to do what you got to do. However, I want to give credit to those boys. This thing came to me in record time faster. It came to me faster than Rock Auto Parts. Uh, it was here in two days. Bam! I heard it. I was working on the car. I heard a horn blow. I looked out, and it was the FedEx man with our brand new pre bent lines that we will be installing later on in the video. It happens, guys. Anyway, meanwhile. There's something I want to show everyone who owns a uh, 1966 Ford Thunderbird shop manual, whether it be the original or reproduction. This is a reproduction. They reproduced it from the original pages all the way. It did an excellent job, by the way. On page 2-9, you'll see a brake photograph. You may even see this exact same photograph in the 64 and 65. I don't know. And uh, all I have is a 66, so I don't know. On... On your back, this is your back brake, your drum brakes. Now this little arrow right here says that this is forward, see? That means that this is the front of the car, that's the front of the car. And this is your first brake shoe, your primary, and this is your secondary. Well, you'll notice that the primary here is longer and the secondary is shorter. And you'll notice that the <clears throat> emergency brake uh, cable comes in here, comes over and attaches to this inside rod. I forget what they call that. Is there a name for that thing? It's called a, uh, I don't think they even have a name for it. They don't have an arrow. Yeah, they do. It's the parking brake lever. That's what that is. The parking brake lever. That's this inside rod here. But this photograph is wrong. If this is the front, this should be the short shoe. The short shoe goes on the front. The long shoe goes on the rear. And this parking brake lever should be attached to this shoe, not this shoe. Also, <clears throat> on the 66, uh, you do not have these two retaining springs. What are they called? They're called, uh, what are they called? They're called shoe hold down springs. <clears throat> right here, you'll see there's two on this shoe and two on this shoe, upper and lower. On the 66 that I have, there's only one. It's down here in the low spot. Okay? So, this this diagram, you know, anytime you... If, you, if a person were to look at this and not know anything about, you know, brakes or cars or anything, and he installed them like this, you know, trying to do the job right, he'd get the book out and he'd look at every detail and he'd read everything 50 times and, and blah, blah, blah. He'd put them on wrong. The short shoe goes to the front. The long shoe goes to the back. This picture is incorrect. Make note of that, guys. If you have a 66 
Uh, and if you have a 64, 65, or any other manual that has this picture there, look at it closely. Should be front, short, back, long. One other thing, I went ahead and dug out this uh, digital torque wrench that my son bought me for Christmas last year. It's a, uh, what do they call this thing? This is a Pittsburgh half inch drive digital torque adapter. You stick your old half inch drive uh, socket or breaker bar in there, put your socket on the other end, and then uh, it's put on there. You can, you have to put one of these on there actually. Uh, you can, you can put a large socket or you can adapt it down to a 3 8 or a 1 quarter. Okay, that would go on there like that. Or you can just put the socket directly on there. And then there's, uh, there's videos on YouTube that shows you how to set this up, how to make it work. Uh, it's had nothing but pretty good reviews as far as I can tell. So what we're going to do is when we, uh, uh, when, we put the, when we put the lug nuts on the car, we're going to go ahead and use this. I've already told you that I, I torqued down the, uh, the nuts on the differential. It's pretty dark up under there to be seen. So I, I just went ahead and used my click torque wrench on that. But uh, this is supposed to be a pretty nifty little affair according to what I've seen on YouTube videos. Everybody, it's fairly accurate too. I mean it's within like one inch pound or one foot pound. Uh, anywhere from uh, I think it was a half a, a foot pound to one foot pound. Uh, you know, accuracy as determined by the use of a another torque wrench. They they use this to calibrate, well not to calibrate, to compare uh, another torque wrench to see how close they were. And they were within like, you know, 0.5 up to maybe one foot pound difference. So we're going to use that. I think it's pretty cool. The one thing I did notice though, they said if you have one of these, this, this foam rubber pad here uh, will sometimes press against these buttons and turn them on and bleed your battery down so you might want to cut a hole in there and around you know about in this area here in the pad so it doesn't do that we'll be using this later one more thing we'll be doing during this video we're going to be putting uh, oil in the differential I told you that last video we'd be getting to that this time we're going to be putting this Supertech which is Walmart brand 80W90 and you'll notice there's a difference in label between these three and this one. I've had this one for years and years unopened. It was never, I had never cut the tip off. I just kept it for years. I don't know how many years I've had this, but it's still good. And the, the differential takes five pints of gear oil. And how do I know that? By the way, some of those bottles of oil you saw out there are partially empty. But I, I think I can get five pints out of all of them. In your uh, shop manual, on page 4-1, which is the section number 4, which deals with the rear axle, you'll look up here and it says specifications. All right, specifications, page 4-24. So we go to page 4-24, and you shall see. i got a lot of highlighted pink stuff everywhere. It says lubricants. Uh, right here. Ring gear size, 9 inch, which is what we have. I already showed you that. Capacity in pints, 5. Piece of cake, guys. Piece of cake. That's why it's important to have one of these manuals. Uh, these manuals are, I mean, you just can't hardly get along without one if you've never torn a 1966 Ford apart or if you're not a natural mechanic, you know. One more thing you'll get out of your specifications, it says to use 90 grade lubricant oil. That's exactly what I'm going to be using, using an ADW90. And it has to do with temperatures, that's what, you know, that's us, we're good to go. 90, 90 weight oil for the differential. And the stud nuts that hold the carrier to the housing, which was that thing I was having so much trouble getting in. You tighten those nuts down 30 to 40 foot pounds. There it is, all in the specification sheet. Good stuff. Beautiful day in Arkansas today. Wonderful, wonderful. It's going to be 75 degrees. I love it. Right now it's about 70, 71. And uh, over here, you'll see that our two Canada geese, uh, two Canada geese are back. And uh, they may be the same ones from last year. I don't know. I don't know. 
but they, they'll disappear for a day or two, and then all of a sudden they'll come back. We may see some small goslings diddy bopping around over there pretty soon. I don't know how long it takes to hatch an egg, but I'm sure they're not standing around over there for no reason. A couple more details for you young folks that don't don't know about these things or would like to learn or get a refresher. I had to go downtown today, take the dogs to the vet, and uh, I could not find my brake spoon yesterday. So I stopped off in the auto parts store and I picked up a new brake spoon. And what the heck is a brake spoon, right? Now I know, you know most, most of the old timers know what this is. The young folks don't. Well, I'm going to show you what the brake spoon is for. This again, back to our drawing, uh, you have your brake shoes I colored in in yellow. And this black line all the way around here is your brake drum. You know, the heavy black brake drum that I have on the car. These brakes, when you first install them, the brake shoes. When I say brakes, I'm referring to brake shoes. When you first install your brake shoes, uh, you can adjust them out pretty close to the end of, the, you know, to the edge of the drum on both sides. You, you can expand those things because when you first put them in, there's going to be quite a gap you know, between the drum and the shoe. So you mechanically adjust it out and then later on uh, you can adjust it. You, you put it in there actually is what I'm trying to say. You mechanically adjust it out by hand using this little wheel down here. Now this is an adjuster. This is called the adjusting screw and it's a uh, this thing expands left and right and it has a little wheel on it right there that's got little teeth on it and you can use that wheel to spin uh, one way or the other which enables this, the uh, shoes to expand this way or that way you know, away from the drum. If you're trying to take uh, a drum off and it's stuck the yeah, first thing most people do is they try to you know unscrew this thing down here which will enable them to go like that but nine times out of ten you'll find that the shoe is actually stuck to the drum so yeah, yeah you have to unloosen it no doubt about it but it usually doesn't do much good you have to resort to other methods. Anyway, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this brake spoon I showed you. And we are going to adjust. Uh, first, you adjust it by hand. You know, kind of get it out there. You know, you lift this. This little thing right here has to be lifted away because it's pressing against those teeth. I'll show you that. And uh, once you get it lifted away, you can take a screwdriver and kind of slide underneath it there and just kind of lift up a little bit which clears this thing here from the teeth. And uh, then you can go ahead and adjust, you know, turn that wheel with the teeth on it. But once you get it adjusted out pretty good and you, and you, you trial and fit your drum on and off and on and off until you kind of get a little less slight drag, just a very slight drag, and you can still get your drum on. And then once it's on, it still needs additional adjustment. Well, how is that done? The final adjustment is done with a brake spoon or periodic adjustment. Is done with a brake spoon. Now this thing here, this this little, uh, this is supposed to be an automatic uh, adjuster. Is what this is. This cable runs up and connects up here. When you hit the brakes, this this cable pulls, and when it pulls, it it it, it causes the uh, the thing to go down and adjust it. And it, I, you know, I just it just doesn't always work. <laughs> In some cases, it goes up, and. Uh, and to me, it's never where I've never seen it work really well. It works okay, but it just doesn't. And uh, this spoon is what you use to periodically adjust your brakes. You know, a good young fella, uh, you know, who wants to learn how to work on his car. Every once in a while, he'll get down, he'll do a little tune up. I'm talking about an old, uh, like an old uh, classic car, like we have. Now, when I take cars, I'm not talking about, you know, fuel injected front wheel. Uh, transverse engine type cars. I'm talking the modern stuff. I'm talking about uh, classic cars. That's what this entire series is about. A classic car, whether it be a Thunderbird or it doesn't matter, a Chevy, uh, a Mopar, it doesn't matter. And uh, I'll show you how the brake spoon is used to adjust your brakes uh, periodically, maybe every six months or so. Whatever you feel is necessary. It's your car, you know. All right, let's go back out to the car. All right, before we can get to that adjuster and me show you how to do it, I have to get this drum off. Unfortunately, you know, up until now, this thing has been giving me a little bit of difficulty getting the drum on and off. Yeah, I can wiggle around, play with it, screw around with it, and it'll eventually come off. It shouldn't do that. It should slide right off. And the, the reason it's giving me trouble is some Yahoo years ago 
used a hammer to probably loosen up the drum. You know, they was banging it all over trying to get it to come loose. And they hit it right here. Right there. And you see what they did. They flattened that out right there. Probably in a couple other areas. But that's the main one. And they caused the metal to rise up along here. So whenever I try to pull the drum out, it hits right there. And I have to kind of play with it and get it up over that hump. Well, I'm tired of doing that. So I've got, what, you know, what am I going to, how do I fix that? Well, I really don't fix it. I just prevent it from causing the drum from coming out. And the only way you can do that, I'm not going to take a hammer and hammer it back down. That's for sure. <laughs> I've got a little uh, smooth stone. Let me uh, back up the camera here so it doesn't shake so much. I've got a little uh, smooth stone that I can, that I can, that I put in my drill here, <laughs> right here. Okay. And it's very smooth. It's not a coarse. And I'm just going to rub it back and forth like that until that hump is eventually ground down enough. Just enough. See, fortunately, this is in the thick part of the metal right here. It's not in the thin part. So I can take that down quite a bit to where the drum will slide off on and off. So let me work on that before we uh, do anything else. Well, we're getting there, but I had to change stones and put a flat one in there. you got to be careful not to be banging into your drum. Just kind of take your time, go slow if you ever run into this. I had to do, I've had to do this over the years probably five or six times. You get some mechanic, you know, his answer to everything is a huge hammer. I hate guys like that. One other thing, when you're going back and forth with your stone, be very careful. Don't be running that stone into the threads. You screw up those threads, you got real problems on your hands because you're going to have to change that thing out and get that bolt out. Not an easy job, trust me. Well, I had to change stones one more time, which enabled me to get a little bit closer to the drum. The whole idea here was not to tear up the drum. Now, somebody might have said, well, why didn't you just grind out this, the hole in the drum? No, no, we do not do that, okay? You go ahead and take it off the thick metal part, not some thin thing on, the, on a drum. This, it's ground down now. She comes off nice and easy. She'll slip right off. See there? Piece of cake. Job done. Now let's move on to the brake spoon business. Now on this uh, set of brake shoes and everything, as I stated, the wheel that we're talking about, that little tooth wheel, there it is down there. That's the adjustment wheel on this particular set of brakes. Now I have seen where there are, there, there's a, an adjustment, separate adjustments for each uh, shoe. Now it seems to me that was a foreign car I once owned. Uh, you, you adjust it. Uh, each shoe had its own adjustment wheel just like this. They had a different kind of configuration setup. Then I've seen adjustment wheels, uh, one for each shoe where there was an adjustment at the top and an adjustment at the bottom. And then I have seen where there's an adjustment down here. You know, you, the wheel with the, when I say adjustment, I'm talking about the wheel with the tooth wheel, that thing right there. Uh, I've seen it at the bottom there, and there's no way to adjust your brakes. There's, there's no way you can, there's no way to use your, uh, your spoon, your brake spoon. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. So the whole idea here is to adjust. Let me zoom in here a little bit. The whole idea here is to adjust this tooth wheel, which causes that threaded rod to go, you know, go in and out of this barrel, and it causes the brakes to go back in and out, in and out, against the drum. So once you do your initial your initial adjustment by hand, like I said, you put your drum on, you finish it up by using the brake spoon. So let's do that. Now in the back of your uh, plate, in the back of your, you know, the backing plate is what I call it. This is where we're at. This is the back of the car. This is the spring. In the back of the plate, you will find, depending, you know, depending on the, the configuration, like I said, you may find more than one hole because it takes more than one adjustment to adjust the brakes. But on the old T-Bird here, we only have one hole and this brake spoon fits into the hole like so okay that's the purpose of a brake spoon and what happens when it goes through the hole well let's take a look ow just bump my head oh well, i am i am so sacrificing for you people here <laughs> okay once you stick it through the hole there it is right there you catch on that wheel with it see just like so and then you push downward with the handle down we go and when you do it turns that wheel. See it turning the wheel? Then you jack it back again. You turn it again. And you turn it again. That's how you adjust your brakes using a brake spoon. Okay? And both wheels are the same. One more thing I have to cover. I'm not trying to drag this out. 
but you know there are a few details that you need to know about now this is called the self adjuster right here and it engages those teeth you're trying to turn and in some cases like right here it's stopping it from turning so what you have to do in a case like that is take a screwdriver slip it in from behind you won't be able to see because you'll have the drum on you know but you can feel it just stick it in from behind like so and then push that self adjuster away from those teeth okay and at the same time you have to slide your spoon in while you're holding that adjuster it doesn't take a lot of pressure to do it but just get it clear of the teeth then you can go ahead and slip your your little old adjuster in there and make your adjustment as you can see right here it's very difficult to do first of all it's that stupid jack stands in the way but that's okay it's, very, it's kind of tough to do with that adjuster there it just doesn't want to but when you're trying to go up with it it sort of stops it see how it's stopping it right there I'm trying to move it and it won't move because the adjuster's in the way you got to push it out of the way you know the only way you can do that is with a screwdriver and it's done usually uh, with the wheel still on the car when I say wheel I'm talking about tire you drive it into a garage they'll jack the car up they'll spin your tire slightly while they're adjusting it you know junk 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 and they'll spin the wheel and then finally when it begins to slow down they'll know they're reaching the the correct distance and then that'll be it you know that's all it is to it it's a mechanical adjustment that spreads out the shoes against the drum well, let's put the drum on and I'll do a little bit of adjusting here first thing I did was uh, put your you know the the drum back on then I took a couple of these lug nuts and turned them around the other way with the flat side against the drum and just tighten them up hand tight that's so the drum wouldn't wiggle around a little bit and they, they will wiggle around you know if it's nice and clean and everything's good to go you don't want it wiggling around when you're trying to adjust the brakes from the rear and only hand tight that's all you need just tighten them up hand tight that's all and now it's nice and snug see it's not going to go anywhere all right let's go underneath Let's give it a spin first and see how tight I got it by adjusting it by hand before I put the drum on. Let's see, we're listening for sound, you know, a drag against the uh, shoes. Just a little bit, hear that? Hear it? Okay. So that's, that's really kind of loose right there. We don't want it quite that loose. So let me adjust that star uh, two or three times, and we'll come back and do it again. All right, this is about the tightness that I like to have my drums before I put the wheels on. You, you can hear it, and you can see that it kind of slowly goes around. Now watch this. That's about right, the way I like them. Okay, now they'll, they'll get a little bit looser as you apply the brakes a couple times it'll readjust the shoes and all the mechanisms and everything let's put the tire back on and see how that turns all right this is just about the way i like mine okay i don't want it to go spinning round and round and i don't want it to stop i mean well you know just go a couple inches and stop i want it to go at least halfway around that's about right that's about the way i like them now adjusting brakes is a touchy feely thing it's not something you're going to just jump right in there right away, do right. You're probably going to have to take several stabs at it until you get it the way you want. Now, some people like their wheels a little bit looser on the brakes. But from experience, I know that after I've hit the brakes a couple of times, they loosen up anyway. And uh, that's just the way I want it, you know. I was showed, told that by an old mechanic years ago. He said, you want a slight drag. So that's the way I've always done it. Never had any problems. And here's the other one. About the same okay that's what I like you'll have to figure out how to do it on your own car your own self you know like I said somebody wants them real loose so I can't imagine wanting them any tighter they wouldn't work but some people like to do wheel just go round and round and round I with a very very tiny little slight drag not me touchy-feely guys figure it out for yourself this is just a kind of a guide to go by now there's a little lady who's very interested in Thunderbird brake repair. Hey there, my baby. He's a little Dee Dee. 
All right, we are ready to put these lines on underneath. The first thing you do is remove these little red protective caps that are on the threads. Just uh, just kind of pop them up a little bit with your fingernail till you get about that much clearance, and then go ahead and unscrew them. Holding it, you know, tight with the wrench while you unscrew it, you know, it'll come off a whole lot better. And if you use two hands, that is. Let me get this, get back underneath the car, and see if we can't at least get the part that goes into the uh, wheel cylinders uh, screwed in by hand. Well, I'm happy to say that our brake lines are now on all the way across and they're connected up here to the uh, junction block which runs to the front of the car all, all the way across. Oh, my son's calling. All right, I have two more things left to do. This is one of them. There's a rubber hose that goes through the uh, frame, or not the frame, but the body of the car comes on down through that hose clamp comes on down and then you can see the end of it's right here and what that does is it goes to that little vent for those of you who've been keeping up with the uh, with the videos you know that on top of the axle uh, housing there's a vent that I have put a piece of tape over quite a while ago I'll remove that tape it's the uh, it's the breather it lets air into the axle it needs it I guess with all that oil but I got a brand new hose we're going to stick on there with a clamp. I'm going to run it on down and we'll cut it to the right length. I'm going to run it from the top down to the bottom, not the bottom to the top. We'll stick it through the hole, run it through that, uh, run it through that clamp right there, run it on down. And when we get to the point, we'll have a little bit of flexibility in there. We'll go ahead and cut it. One more thing about this uh, brakes. For those of you who have Thunderbirds, it's right here. Let me get the light so you can see what's going on. You see this hose? that runs from this uh, junction block where the, uh, where the brake lines come in. This hose has to be a downward loop, okay? If you have it in an upward loop, you got it wrong, okay? This is where it connects to the brake line and runs up to the front of the car. Now, the second thing I'm gonna have to do, I told you we had two things. I'm gonna tape this off, this, this line right here. I'm not gonna screw it into this uh, line yet. When I get to the front of the car, I want to disconnect the brake line from the master cylinder and I'm going to blow it out. I'm going to put a, a tube on here. I'm going to blow that th the, all that old nasty fluid, if there's any in there, I'm going to blow it all out. Like I said, these are some nice looking brake lines. I'm not going to change them. They don't need it. The gas line doesn't need to be changed. Looks really good. So let me go ahead and get that hose hooked up. Now there's that little vent sticking out from the top of the axle housing, okay? I gotta take that tape off. And there it is right there. It's that baby right there sticking up. If you don't have one of these on your on your uh, axle, sometimes they break off. You gotta buy another one. Uh, I think you can get them. I think Max Thunderbird sells those. I don't think uh, Rock Auto has that. It screws in. You can uh, get you a new one if need be. I've got the car lowered down to about, oh, maybe where the wheels are about that, the tires are about that far from the concrete. I'm going to go ahead and lower it down just a little bit more, and then I'm going to tighten up all the, the hub nuts. And uh, it's 75 to 100 foot-pounds. I'm going to go ahead and use my little digital torque wrench here. I've got it set up for, uh, not for trace, but for stop. And uh, what it does is it'll, it'll tell me what my maximum torque was. And... It won't go back to zero is what I'm saying as soon as I uh, Take it off and, and look at it. It'll it'll hold uh, The amount of torque and let me know how well I did so we're looking for 75 to 100 Right now. I got to lower it down just a little bit more But I do have all the jack stands out from under it all the wood is out from under it. We're in pretty good shape I'll tell you what we're zeroing in guys All right, we're up to uh 64, 66, 69, blinking red and yellow, 72, 77, looks like 79, 82, 3, 85.1. That's good. That's what we're going to do all the way around to make sure they're all about the same. It's all going to be about 85. It's not quite as accurate, I don't think, as a click torque wrench. You know, the, the torque wrench that was clicked would be 
would just click. So man, I'll tell you what, let's get the torque wrench, the click torque wrench out and find out. Well, it looks like the old torque wrench is no good anymore. I've had it for, what, 40 years or more. It's gone through the flood. It got wet. I oiled it up and everything afterwards. And it's okay at low end. But once you get up to the high end, the accuracy is totally gone. Uh, I went up to 100. I set this at 85, went up to 111 foot-pounds. And it still didn't click over. So it's, it's time for a new one. I, I've been wanting a new one for quite a while anyway. And this will give me a good excuse to get one. I'll pick one up, I think, next month, maybe. I don't know if I need one. Meanwhile, I'll go back to the old digital here, the old backup, and we'll set each one so I can get this car down. All right, so what's the verdict here? The verdict here is this is no good. I've already proved that. And this thing here, well, I gave it the old college try. And I'll tell you what the verdict is on the whole mess here. How about that? Does that tell you anything? All right, guys, I'll tell you what, I'm kind of tired. I think what I'll do is I'll put the oil in tomorrow and I'll hook up that hose. Ain't no problem. I just put the hose over there. I'll cut it at the right length, put the clamp on, tighten it up, squirt the oil in the rear end. So we're going to go ahead and end this video right here. But the big moment has finally arrived. We're going to lower it on down. Then we'll back up and take a look at it. Here we go. Now let's see if it'll come out, hopefully. Yes, it does. Now let's take a look at our car. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at the way that baby sits now, huh? Old Brendan, he wanted to know how that car sat once we get those new springs in there. Remember, it was all laying down on one side? Not anymore. Not anymore. Whatever angle you're seeing is the concrete. But boy, I'll tell you what, that looks good now. I, now that's what I call a, a level car. Imagine what it's going to be like when I get all that chrome shined up and get brand new taillight lenses in there, which I have. It'll take some time, but anyway, I think what we're going to do is next time we'll start this. The oil will be in. Like I said, the tube will be hooked up. The rear end will be done, and we will start on the front. We'll be jacking up the front. We're going to put a fuel pump on next time, I hope. And maybe, well, I don't know if we're going to get the uh, master cylinder changed, but we're sure going to give it a good try. So, we only have one more thing to cover, and we can close out this very long video. I have received another package, once again, from our good subscriber, Scott Johnston, out in Virginia. And he says, I sent a little note, he says, Happy Spring. Something to read besides a car manual. Well, is there anything else to read <laughs> besides a car manual while watching your horseradish grow? He's the one that sent me the horseradish that's out in our, out in our garden. Signed, Scott. He, well, he didn't send it to me. He gave it to me. Hauled it all the way to Hamvention a couple of years ago up in uh, Dayton, Ohio. He sent a Sears Silvertone catalog that has radios dating from 1930 to 1942 now it's not all inclusive uh, but there's a lot of radios in there all silver tones with the prices and everything the radio I have that's a silver tone is 1947 so it won't be in here but this is really interesting to see these things look at this big old thing right here it looks almost like the airline I'll be working on again here pretty quick it was only, it's eight tube it was only 56 bucks so when you guys are laying out five, six, eight hundred dollars for these things, remember it only cost fifty-six bucks new. That was nineteen thirty-three. They got some. Boy, I tell you what, they, they were pieces of furniture back in those days, weren't they? They were really slick. Too bad you can't get anything like that now. Just can't be done. He also sent me another book, uh, Tabletop Radios, complete uh, uh, complete price guide. And this is volume one, and there's volume two and three values for, for 2003 this is really neat just to look at these old radios you don't see a lot of these radios i've never seen one of these in person boy that's a beauty isn't it gosh well i tell you that's there's just thousands of them in there <laughs> tons and this is just volume one all kinds of stuff what it does it gives you just gives you the value for instance this the forest crosley is worth about 250 bucks I don't know where he's getting that from. I imagine he, did, he does a little <clears throat> describing in the front is where he had to value the radios. I haven't had a chance to look at it. I just got it in. 
that's pretty neat. And lastly, included in the uh, with the books is a small plastic packet of these. I've never heard of watermelon radishes. I just I just never have. And uh, so I went out and I I planted them in the garden. That when I was planting them uh, next next to the uh, these are cherry bells in this big bag I bought the other day. So I planted just one little row of them. I didn't use them all up in case something went wrong. I wanted to, you know, maybe grow them again or replant them or do something. But right, sure enough, as soon as I planted these next to the cherry bells, two days of gusher rain hit and all the seeds washed into one corner. They're in the box. They didn't get to go anywhere. But here's the problem. They're probably mixed up with the cherry bells now and I don't know which is which. So when it comes time to you know, to thin them out. I don't want to be thinning these things out. I don't mind thinning the cherry bells. Got millions of those, you know. So we're just going to have to play this one by ear. Maybe there'll be a little bit of a difference in the leaf or the speed in which they grow. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I really appreciate him sending me these things. And of course, we all know what that means. Shout out to Scott Johnston of Virginia. Until next time, this is John.